Since the presidential election of 2016, caucuses, primaries, what do this shit mean? Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina. The issues are major, but the discretion is minor. Are you Republican, Democrat, maybe Libertarian, Tea Party, Independent, or simply an American? Do you want your Second Amendment rights to shoot or get shot? Well, what about Emmanuel AME or Walter Scott? Do you really love Jesus or are you a pretender? Righteous right, gun lobby, what the fuck is your agenda? Do you really believe Mexico will pay to build that wall? Or are you just hype beast of hyperbole and not true at all? The lies, the scandals, the fingers being pointed. But somebody's gonna win. Which king will be anointed? I guess we really won't know these answers till y'all choose. I just hope that when they win, we don't all lose. Yo, what's up? It's Bum B, rep UGK for life. A lot of y'all know me as an MC. Maybe some of y'all know I teach at Rice University. Nobody really knows me as a journalist, though, but that's cool. I'm not trying to be a journalist. I'm not acting like I'm a journalist. But I do want to know what's going on with this political situation. So I came out here to the primaries to see exactly what these candidates are talking about and see why people follow them. So we're going to go check out Trump. We're going to check out Cruz. I don't know, maybe even Ben Carson. But we're going to go and see what's really going down. We're going to see what's really good in the hood. I'm going to keep the camera rolling so you can see what I see, so I won't have to lie to you, and I ain't going to let them lie to you. Keep it 100 already. So we're on our way to Walterboro, South Carolina, for a Trump rally. I can't sit here and say that I'm 100% comfortable going into small towns in South Carolina. If anything happens to me, if they don't destroy the camera, we, there should be some kind of proof as to what the fuck happened. So we're on the Bun Witch Project right now. For a lot of people, especially in these smaller towns, it's the biggest show in town, right? Even if you're not into politics or whatever, a lot of people just want to be in the fucking room to see what this idiot says. People that are for racism, the racists, they have all the time in the world, right? I don't think anybody is getting the attention or the interest of latent as well as blatant racists more than Donald Trump. Because I don't believe that all poor white people are racist, right? I just don't believe that at all. The problem that the poor white man has with the poor black man is that the poor white man and the poor black man can have the same grades, but there's an initiative to help the poor black man succeed because of the way they've been held down. White people don't look at poor white people and say you've been held back. They look at poor white people and say, you're lazy, you're inbred trash. It's very hard out here for the poor white man. He's fighting for his identity. All right, so we arrived at our first stop for the day. We're like really fucking early. And uh, you gotta be early for these Trump things because if you don't, you basically don't get in. Because, you know, like I said, Everybody wants a fucking front row seat to the train wreck, you know? Well, I've got a couple of them, man. All right, how you doing? Yeah, bud. All right, what's your name? Larry Johnson. You uh, have a lot of pride here on this car. Yes, sir. I've got uh, a lot of pride everywhere, bro. I believe in uh, flags. I believe in my history in all kind of ways. Well, you got this don't tread on me flag. That's a South Carolina Gatson flag. Mm -hmm. And the Tea Party uses that now. So do you consider yourself a Republican or more of a Tea Party uh, person? But I think the Democrat and Republicans need to be abolished, and we vote for the person. We need to take our country back. So if we take the country back from who, the government? We need to take the country back to the founding fathers of what they've stood for and what the Constitution says. Our Bill of Rights are being stepped on. There's all kinds of things being stepped on. But, but wouldn't you agree that as a black man, if we went back to 1776 and to the rules and the institutions and the policies of 1776, it wouldn't fare that well for me, would it? 1776? For one, it wouldn't recognize me as a person. I'd it only be worried. I'd only... Not in 1776. Right, right, right. But the best thing about that I can say is this is 2016, not 1776, and we're going forward, but we're not going backwards. And so Trump will have your vote. All the way. All thanks, the way. Thanks you for got it, bro. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of that. We're not in the land of Republicans, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the fucking South. Ain't shit going to make sense.
Obama, you're fired. Jobs. I want jobs. I want, I want to see, if you ride into this town right here, downtown Willowboro, mm -hmm. you'll see that it's run down. Back in the 40s and 50s when there was jobs, it was a beautiful place. All the other stuff that Trump says, look, it's all bullshit. But all these guys are arguing over which bill they signed and which bill that they did this. Who gives a shit? Let's get this, let's get this jobs going. It's gonna help your kind of people. It's gonna help my kind of people. It's gonna, it's gonna, you know, there's not gonna be so much crime. A job is what people have to have. You know, uh, you can you take many of these people, especially in South Carolina, especially in this area of South Carolina, it's the poorest area in the whole state. And you take these people who are construction workers, who are day laborers, who don't make any money, right? And you tell them that you have to have health insurance. Well, they can't afford it. Well, then, if they don't buy it, then they're going to be taxed. And they can't afford, and they that, can't either. afford that either. So people are legitimately angry about that. He does a good job of using people's anger to get them excited. And I think that that's a, that's a good thing. That's a talent. And uh, I think it's definitely going to help him. He may be the least conservative, but I do believe he has conservative morals and, and values. The worst Republican is always better than the best Democrat, yes? Absolutely, I, I think so. This is amazing that you've been able to construct this. I, I mean, obviously, it's, it's does it come like this, or this are this stickers? No, no. So this is posters that you constructed? Yes, sir. I just cut it out. That's amazing. Thank Good you. for you. Thank you. So, question, have you always voted exclusively Republican? For, for someone like you that has voted exclusively for, I'm going to say, maybe the last two elections, because you don't, don't look at the over 30, um, does this, is this encouraging about the future of the Republican oh, Party absolutely. to you? He is a businessman, and he knows exactly what he's doing. So when he brings that information into the United States of America and being the president, he can fix our economy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Our country's been taken away from us. It's going so fast. Make America great again. We are going to make America so great. We are going to, we are going to win again. You know, we don't win very much. You're very tough, smart people. You like to win, right? This guy over here, you like to win. And we don't win anymore. We used to win. We don't win anymore. Well, we're going to start winning again. And you know, and by the way, you know we're going to win. You're going to get tired of winning. Yeah. With Donald Trump, we're going to win so much. We're going to get tired of winning. So Saturday, get out and vote. Thank you. We love you all. Thank you very much. This dude could give two shits about these people. If he wins, he ain't coming back. Much less if he loses. That's right, everybody. The Trill OG is back at it. We just pulled up in Easley, South Carolina at Mutt's Barbecue. We're going to go in here and see what the Tea Party and Ted Cruz has to say about the election. Follow your boy. That's between Donald and the Post. I'm not going to get in the middle of that. I'll leave it to the two of them. Do you think it's unchristian to have a border wall? Senator Cruz, do you think it's unchristian to have a border wall? Do you think that's unchristian to build a border wall? I think it's unchristian to build a border wall. I think a lot of things are unchristian. You see some sheet here today that's unchristian, probably. Let's follow up. You know, I, I spend a lot of time in Washington, D.C., and when I come to a place like South Carolina, I say to myself, it's great to be back in the United States of America. <laughs> I'm down here defending our investment in Ted Cruz. I'm asking you, let's ratify this in South Carolina. This is a man who keeps his promises, and he has kept every single one of them. God bless the great state of South Carolina. If I'm elected president, the first thing I intend to do is instruct the Department of Justice and the IRS and every other federal agency that the persecution of religious liberty ends today. 
Usually, voters vote with their wallet based on the economy. Is the economy doing good? I want to keep the juice flowing. The economy doing bad? I'm going to hire the guy that's going to get the juice flowing. This year, they're voting with their middle finger. And their middle finger is toward government because they're fed up. And now you're seeing that resonate. Look, look at the way the polls are. The outsider, Trump, Carson, Cruz, Fiorina, they were over 50% of all the voters. President Cruz, how does that sound being president? Well, we're going to do it together. Good. We're high school friends, and we came to see you together. Thank, thank, thank you both for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Senator Cruz, how do you plan to stop the persecution of the religious rights by the DOJ? What's your plan to stop that persecution? Look, we can from day one instruct the Department of Justice and every agency of government to stop persecuting religious liberty. I mean, it is the abuse of executive power that is leading to it. And we're going to end that by stopping that abuse. Do you think that's the biggest abuse right now? Uh, I think we're seeing it a lot of places, but I think the federal government targeting religious faith is wrong and it's contrary to our Constitution. Thanks for your time. Thank you. The majority of the people that I meet have been nice. They've been considerate. They've been, I hope, honest. A lot of them seem to have been very honest and unfiltered in their views. It's just these rooms, the rhetoric, the coded language. This is your safe space for you to talk about the America that you want. That's coded, man. How can you have a chant, build that wall? Because everybody knows there's not going to be a Mexican in the room. It's crazy. Well, I hope that's a camera and not some kind of Gatling gun. Don't take away my Second Amendment rights. Right on, man. <laughs> that means we're for Trump. <laughs> you know, I find it funny that almost everybody is addressing the Second Amendment, but nobody is talking about the church shooting and nobody is talking about Walter Scott. How can you not? have that conversation if we're talking about guns. Being a Democrat at a conservative convention is a lot like being an atheist at a Southern Baptist leadership conference. No bearings, no frame of reference. I wonder how many of the people in here now will be here for this. Conservatives in particular, we need to understand the pundits and the media think that they have complete control of us. I think it's getting close to the time when we need to shake them off and start thinking for ourselves. You'll notice that the media has a tendency to ignore me. And you know, from the very beginning, uh, every week, you know, they write my political obituary. Uh, <laughs> and then I say, turn around and I'm still there. Right. I mean, uh, because, you know, I cannot be controlled by the political class. And it doesn't matter whether they're Democrats or Republicans, they don't like that. Uh, and I think to a large degree, they hope that by minimizing my existence, that people will say, well, he's not really serious, or he's not really running. So even though I like him, we probably shouldn't vote for him. That's their strategy. We'll see if it works. The Tea Party is all about restoring the Constitution. Okay. The Republicans aren't all about that. But the problem has gotten to be, in the last two elections, I've had to hold my nose and vote. And I don't want to have to do that again with this Mr. Trump. I go all over the country representing the Tea Party values, principles of our founders. Donald Trump's never been to one event. Could you stomach the possibility, as a person that votes Republican, of having to vote for Donald Trump in oh, the yes. election? It would be, again, as you say, holding my nose, because the other side, which is, is a godless party now, the Democrat Party voted at their last convention three times to keep all reference to God out of their convention. The Democrats have openly become hostile to God. My challenge to you tonight is this. I don't really care in the primary who you vote for, because I know you're gonna make, you're gonna, you're gonna search your heart and you're gonna pray about it. We're, by the way, we're still in America. You can still pray, it's not a public school. Yeah. 
Hillary could collapse again. Hillary could collapse. <laughs> <laughs> you mean have another, you mean have another five minute coughing fit? <laughs> with, with, within the uh, primary, I mean, could she lose it? Yeah, I mean. She's not in an orange jumpsuit or black and white stripes going to jail. Today the Pope said, it's not the first to build a What about the Pope just getting involved in the, in the political thing in the election? I was raised Catholic. I believe I'm a Christian, one of the ones that needs help and forgiveness, you know, as a sinner. All have sinned and fallen short. And uh, I was very disappointed in the Pope. Okay, All right, nice sir. to meet you, Mr. Hannity. Very nice to meet you. Um, question. With Ted Cruz taking a two point. You really like the Houston Astros? I'm from Houston. I better like. Oh, you're killing me, I because I, I kind of like my Yankees and Mets. You know? Oh, no, we did you guys bad this yeah, year. Yeah, you kind of did, I know. But, but you're still, it was you're only still a one-game playoff, though. You're still the Yankees, so I don't think you have anything to lose right now. I love baseball. Oh, you man, know. you and me both. Did you see the Yankees got the, uh, what's the name from the Reds, the uh, relief pitcher? Throws 103. Oh, oh really? The left-hand kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, that's you. Yeah, like you guys need another pitcher. Who would have imagined that despite his sinister intentions, Obama could make so much progress in accelerating America's decline. But here we are, in dire straits. And unless we regain control from these malcontents. This was interesting, you know, it's definitely not a room that I would normally want to be in. Not necessarily a room I'd like to come back to, but I'm glad I was here. But I can't wait to go out these doors and get back to my world, the real world, the real America. Not the America that they talk about it there on stage. The real America. Well, it's time to head to the airport, get back to my day job. I got a show tonight. Two and a half days is not enough to really get involved in what's really going on in Charleston, South Carolina, but it was more than enough time to figure out what was going on with the primaries. I don't know if we really got our answers, but we asked the questions. It's pretty much all you can do. I got to get back to my day job. Thank y'all for fucking with me and Vice. I'll see y'all next time.